Hello folks, this is Bob Strachan. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect at AWS and I'm about to show you a quick demo of a user-defined function that we've added for Amazon Athena that's going to let you analyze text fields. Why would you want to analyze text fields? So you may have tabular data that contains textual information like social media feeds, like tweets for example, or product reviews, or customer support uh, tickets, um, any sort of text field that might come from, from end users. Um, perhaps in multiple languages. If you serve a global audience, some folks might be writing text in, in different languages. Um, maybe the text contains personally identifiable information that you need to detect and possibly redact from that text before you can do further analysis on it. Um, the text may be discussing your products or places, other entities that you need to identify for analysis. Um, and people might be expressing sentiment, happy thoughts or sad thoughts that you want to identify so that you can, um, again, do analysis and figure out what actions to take. Uh, this uh, capability I'm going to show you allows you to use Amazon Athena to do all of that. You can translate text between languages, again just using a SQL query within Athena. Uh, Athena is going to call the Amazon Translate service behind the scenes. Uh, you can use this to normalize text in multiple languages into one language for example. Um, it also allows you to use Amazon Comprehend behind the scenes, again all from a SQL query in Athena to detect which language a particular piece of text was written in. Uh, you can detect the dominant sentiment of that text. You can identify entities in the text or personally identifiable information, all using Amazon Comprehend behind the scenes. And then you can also do redaction. So we can take a string and identify um, entities or personally identifiable information to be removed from that string. And I'll show you examples of this stuff in action. There's a simple two-step process to get up and running. First, you install the text analytics UDF handler into your AWS account. This process takes under a minute. I'll show it to you in a second. Very easy. And then you start using the new functions, and you're going to use that forever. Because once you start using them, you won't want to stop. So I'm going to show you all of this. The blog post that defines everything you need to know is amazon.com slash text analytics UDF. So let's go take a look at that now. Okay, so here I am in the browser. I've entered that URL into the address bar. Again, amazon.com slash text analytics UDF. That's going to redirect me to the blog post, uh, which describes all about how this user-defined function works. You can see here it uses Athena, uh, which calls Lambda behind the scenes, and the Lambda function is going to call comprehend and translate, depending on which functions you call. So there's a lot of information here. There's some examples of the kinds of queries that you can run. We'll come back to that in a second. But let's get straight to installing it. Uh, so in this install section, you can see here you can install it from the serverless application repository. We have pre-built this already. The source code is all also available in GitHub. You can install it from there if you like. The easiest way is just to click this link. It's going to open up in your AWS console. I've already logged into AWS, so I don't need to do that again. But it takes me straight to Lambda deployment using this um, package that we've already deployed to the serverless application repository. You can see here is a link to the GitHub repo where all of the source code is available. So if you want, you can go look at the source code, but you don't have to. To get it up and running, literally you just come down here and click the I Acknowledge button because it's going to create an IAM role that allows um, UDF to call Translate and Comprehend behind the scenes. Um, so we click that, we click Deploy, and within a matter of a few seconds it's going to be uh, installed. Okay, so my function installed already. It took about 20 seconds to get it up and running. Uh, so now we're ready to use it. So let's quickly go back to our blog post. We'll just scroll back up and we'll look at some of these examples that, that uh, I provided at the beginning of the blog post. And we'll try running them and see what happens. So I'm going to go to the Amazon Athena console. I've already logged in. And because this is in preview, yet the UDF function is still in preview, we have to use an Amazon workgroup, an Athena workgroup called Amazon Athena preview functionality. Uh, once the UDFs are generally available, uh, we won't need to do that um, anymore. You can run the functions from any work group. So let's just paste our function into the query editor. Let's take a look at it before we run it. You can see here we're declaring the user-defined function. It's called detect sentiment. It takes two parameters, the text column that we want to analyze, along with the language that identifies the, the, the language that code is written or the, the text is written in, and it's going to return a text string. We'll see what that looks like in a second. And this says that the UDF is going to use Lambda, and this is the name of the function that we just installed uh, from the serverless application repository. And then here's this select part of the statement, should be very familiar, we're calling our function, 
uh, where you're passing in a static string here, but this could equally well be a column in a table that you're selecting from. Uh, and we're going to get the sentiment back. So let's go ahead and run it. It's calling Lambda, which in turn is calling Amazon Comprehend behind the scenes to detect the dominant sentiment. And you can see here it's determined the sentiment is positive. So let's say I wasn't so happy. Let's say I'm very angry instead. And let's just rerun the query. And here it's correctly identified the sentiment as negative. Okay, so you can see how easy it is. Let's try a couple of other quick examples. Just from the blog post, I'll copy and paste here. This one is doing a PII detection, detecting PII entities. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see it's identified from the string that I gave it that there's a name Bob and the address is Herndon, Virginia. So those are the personally identifiable information in that string. Uh, what if I want to create a version of a string that redacts that PII? So let's try the redact PII function. Okay, here I'm passing in the same string and I'm telling it to redact any occurrences of the name entity or the address entity. And I can actually pass a comma separate list of entity types that I want to redact here or I can just use the word all if I want to redact everything, all PII that appears in the string. So you can see here it's created a version of the string with my name removed and address fields removed and just substitute it with the name of the entity. Okay, and finally let's try a translation. Okay, so here I'm passing in the string, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I'm telling it to auto-detect the source language. I could replace that with an, uh, the letters EN since I know it's in English, but I want to demonstrate how uh, this function can auto-detect. So you can pass it in a string in any language. It'll figure out what the language is and then translate it into your desired target language, in this case French. And you see here it's translated my string into French. If I wanted to see the same thing in a different language, like Spanish for example, I put in the language code for Spanish. Run it again and now I've got the string in Spanish. So let's switch back to our blog post real quick. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that it gives you some information about how the UDF works uh, behind the scenes. There's an important section here on optimizing cost. Very important that you understand how you're going to be charged when you run this uh, function because it does call Comprehend and or Amazon Translate behind the scenes, each of which incur an additional cost depending on the amount of text that you're processing. And then there's a fun little tutorial here where we analyze some data from an open data set containing Amazon product reviews. So it shows you how to go through the, uh, the Amazon product reviews and detect which language they're written in. You can detect the sentiment, you can detect the entities. Um, it shows you how to take advantage of the JSON, the advanced JSON output that these UDFs can give you um, and take advantage of the JSON extract functions uh, to create uh, separated out columns with all of the different scores and entities for analysis. Um, and then you can build a little quick site report at the end if you want to visualize the data. Uh, it shows you some troubleshooting, how to clean up at the end, and then there's a function reference where you can uh, go through and try all the different flavors and variations of, of the functions that this UDF provides. So that's the end of the demo, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, my name is Bob Strachan. Here's the link to the blog post again, amazon.com slash text analytics UDF. That uh, contains all the information you need to quickly get started and it gives you examples and the tutorial for how to use uh, the text analytics UDF. So I hope you will install it and try it and uh, be able to put it to good use. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.